So, uh, tonight's class, tonight's class is called the Rebirth of the Crypto Jews. All right, Rebirth of the Crypto Jews. It is inspired from uh, the temperature that we're in right now, um, understanding who we are and what's about to come. The bishops, the deacons have been preparing us for years now of the persecution that is going to come on the earth once again. So, who can tell me what is a crypto Jew? Who can tell me? Let me hear uh, Soldier Johnson. Let me see what Soldier Johnson got. What's a crypto Jew? Uh, I'm not too sure, Cap. Okay. But giving off of the context of what you said, you said it's based off of the weather. I know crypto can relate to, uh, like, cold or uh, cool atmosphere. So, crypto Jew, Jews in the winter. I'm just, <laughs> using, <laughs> I'm just using context clues. <laughs> No, yes, no. Sir. And when extra I say, cool too. When I when I say weather, meaning what's going on, you never heard the the term read the room. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, you're not literally reading the room, right. but you're seeing what's going on. When I say weather, the weather of what's about to happen, what's occurring to us. Oh, don't put the mic down. Let me hear from another soldier. Let me hear from uh, uh, Mishael, soldier Mishael. What's a crypto Jew? Hey, uh, Luke. Oh Lord, these brothers don't pay attention to Bishop Class at all. <laughs> Wow. All right, all right, that's fine, that's fine. We uh, let me see if one of the officers know a crypto Jew, crypto Jew. Shalom, cat, most high in Christ, bless. Hey, shalom, shalom. Uh, it's it's a Jew who's he's keeping the laws and the customs, but behind closed doors and secret, so he doesn't get persecuted. There you go. Oh, Bam. I thought he was gonna say he got cryptocurrency. <laughs> I was going to say it too, strong. <laughs> yeah, that's a brother that got more than $100 worth of Bitcoin. Damn. All right. So, pull up the definition of a crypto Jew, please. Pull up that definition. Um, so, if y'all didn't know, the rebirth of the crypto Jew. Now, who can tell me this? What time period did this happen? Take it off the screen real quick. What time period did this happen? Well, we were termed crypto Jews. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Ain't nobody know. Let me hear. All right, let me see. Let me hear from uh, Oja. Shalom, Captain. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. I said during the Hellenistic period. Mm, no. All right. Let me hear from uh, the Great Gadite. It was during the time period of transition from the Dark Ages into the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. like basically during Spain. During what is that known as? Uh, the the Dark Ages. Eh, the word. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh. Thing is right there. Uh, the the persecution it's called the tip of my uh, tongue. thing is called. It starts with a C. I can't think of it. No, now. let me hear from Austin Thigh. The Spanish Inquisition. The Spanish Inquisition. So you was right around that time, but you got to know the Spanish Inquisition. All right, pull it up on the screen now. Crypto Jew. Yep, you guys in? As far as what? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what the class is about. All right. Read that, uh, Cap. You're going to read it? Uh, no, I'll send it read. Go ahead. I'll send it. Crypto Judaism. Crypto Judaism. Crypto mm. Judaism is the secret. Is the what? Is the secret. Is the secret. What y'all going to understand is there's going to come a time, which it already is right now, where you're going to have to profess your faith secretly. Mm. Not that you don't. Uh, honor Christ, not that you don't keep the commandments, but you ain't going to be outwardly just saying that you're an Israelite because unless you want to get deaf immediately. So read it again. Crypto Judaism is the secret adherence to Judaism. Now, remember, remember, what other time period was it like that, that it was that bad? Yes, sir. Go ahead. During the Maccabees, right? During the Maccabees. They weren't... Um, Shunned by God because they hid it. He understood the situation that he in. Give me that Luke real quick. Give me that Luke 1, I think it's 74, where it says, worship yep. him without fear. Right now, we worship in fear. Yep. We worship in fear. And even in our fear, a lot of our people are so ignorant, we don't understand how to carry ourselves correctly. And that's what we're going to go over in this class uh, today. Go ahead, Cap. You guys are? I was going to read it for you. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Luke 174. Mm -hmm. That he would grant unto us 
that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies. When we be delivered out of the hand of our enemies, read. Might serve him without fear. You see that? Without fear. That's why they had to worship in secret during that time. And that's how it's going to get in this time. Right now, we can profess boldly and outwardly. Hey, I'm an Israelite. Right. We on the streets all week, all day. We on YouTube. We on Twitter. We on Instagram. And nothing happens to us. Guess what? There's going to come a time where the crypto Jew will be back on the earth. Thus saith the Lord. So, read that. Put it back up. Put it back on the screen. Crypto Judaism is the secret adherence to Judaism while publicly professing to be of another faith. Now, that's right now. A lot of us, we may say, yeah, we're Christian. And we know we are Christians, but we know what that means to them. We know what that means to the world when you say you're a Christian, as opposed to what we believe. Read. Practitioners are referred to as crypto Jews. When you do that, you're known as a crypto Jew. I'm a crypto Jew right now. I say, hey, I'm a Christian. I believe in Christ. A lot of y'all are crypto Jews. You got to say one thing on the job around your people so you can navigate. Meanwhile, you know, back at the ranch, you a real Christian. You an Israelite. You don't follow no Christianity. <laughs> Go ahead. Origin from Greek cryptos, hidden. Mm -hmm. the hidden, the hidden Jews. The term is especially applied historically to Spanish Jews. To the what? To Spanish Jews. To Spanish Jews. During what time period, Jonathan? During the Spanish Inquisition. Go ahead, read. To Spanish Jews who outwardly profess Catholicism. Right, because at that time you either had to go to Islam or you had to go to uh, Catholicism or Christianity. Read. Also known as conversos. Conversos. Moranos, Morenos, or the Anus, Anusian. Uh huh. The phenomenon is especially associated with medieval Spain. With medieval Spain, that's the time we're speaking about. Because remember, like Bishop went over, when you go into fourteen or the fourteen forty one, when um the papal bull was written the that papal started bull, slavery. Yep. Yep. All right. This is the time period of the Spanish Inquisition. Go ahead. Following the massacre of 1391 mm -hmm. and the expulsion of the Jews in 1492. Uh-huh. After 1492 in Spain and in 1497 in Portugal, officially they no longer existed. Right, because they, they, they expelled all the Jews or they, they converted. Uh-huh. The Spanish Inquisition and the Portuguese Inquisition were established to monitor converted Jews. This was set up to monitor converted Jews. Uh-huh. And their descendants for their continued adherence to Christian faith mm -hmm. and practice, with severe penalties for those convicted of secretly continuing to practice Judaism. Mm -hmm. Information about secretly observant Jews largely survives in Inquisition cases against individuals. So, that's what a crypto Jew is. Essentially, what we do today, but guess what? There's going to come a time where your belief and your faith, as it says, give me that Matthew, where it says... um. He that wants to save his life will lose his life. That's what I want. There's going to come a time when you profess this faith, it's going to be life or death. It ain't going to be just about your job. It ain't going to be just about losing your family. It's going to be life or death or expulsion or whatever. That's what it's going to get to. And that's how America was started. Look up the Salem witch trials and look up the Puritans and all those other. That's how it always is. That's what America is built on. Go ahead. You got that? Sir, the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, if any man will come after me, read, let him deny himself, let him deny himself, and take up his cross uh -huh. and follow me. For whosoever will save his life, whosoever will save his life, shall lose it, shall lose it, read, and whosoever will lose his life, and whosoever will lose his life, for my sake, for what? For my sake, uh huh, shall find it. You see that? If you lose your life for Christ, you're going to save your life. Meaning what? When it comes that time, in that day, in that moment, when all of us, some of us going to be put in that situation, some of us won't. But when that time comes, if you stand firm for the Lord, you're going to save your life. Why? Because you're, gonna re you're, gonna, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. You're going to have everlasting life. All right? 
Um, you guys like that? Okay. So, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Oh, that's what I want to say. Also, you confessing yourself, uh, confessing Christ, and not um, denying him, that's not talking about when somebody asks you why you got on fringes, and you don't answer the question, Numbers 1538, I'm an Israelite. That's not what that's talking about. <laughs> and I'll explain it as we go throughout the class. So, 2 Timothy 3 and 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Just know also that in the last days. That in the last days. Perilous times shall come. What type of times? Perilous times shall come. Perilous per times. Perilous times. Who knows what perilous means? Who can tell me what perilous means? All right. So does Jonathan. Dangerous times. Pull up the definition, y'all. I think I sent it to you. Yeah, I didn't. All right, perilous times. You hit it right on the head, but I want y'all to get the definition on the screen for everybody. Yep. Perilous. Right, read that. Full of danger. Full of what? Full of danger uh -huh. or risk. Full of danger or risk. That is the type of times that we're going to be living in. Full of danger or risk. Read the similars. Similar. Dangerous. Dangerous. Fraught with danger. Mm -hmm. Hazardous. Hazardous. Risky. Risky. Unsafe. Unsafe. Treacherous. Treacherous times. Those are the times that are awaiting us in the future. All right? That's awaiting us right now. The fact that the bishop get put front and center on a website right. that, that's labeled hate group. Mm -hmm. That IUIC is front and center on groups that that they, that they put us with the KKK. Yeah, let's get that. With, with all that these up. other places. Somehow, we label with groups that murder people. Right, right. We 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 are a higher hate group than Hamas. Right. <laughs> For reading the Bible. For reading the Bible. Hamas ain't nowhere on the on the list. Right. But they don't they don't kill all the so-called Jews. They know about it. They don't cause the war and they they ain't on the list. How they ain't on the list? <laughs> the KKK is known for murdering people. Many murders. And we hide in there. That don't make no sense. Hey, that shows you how powerful the word of God is. All right. You go. Y'all got that list? You want the list, right, Cap? Yeah, yeah. Y'all got the list? The, 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 the top hate groups? You sent it to them or they got to find No, nah, I, I didn't send it to them. I don't have it handy. Dang. Oh. Okay, here we go. Uh, I want the one with the uh. You go, go ahead, Cap. They'll find it. Uh -huh. Get the one that's, that lists us so that they can see that we're higher on the list than the KKK. I think the KKK was like around twenty one or something, Damn. and we up there in the top five or something like that. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. So dangerous, risky times are going to come. Go to Luke twenty one and twenty two. Let's see if that lines up with what Christ said. Luke twenty one and twenty two. Let's see how perilous and dangerous these times are going to be the book of luke chapter 21 verse 22 mm -hmm. for these be the days of vengeance for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled that all things are written may be fulfilled what are the things what are the days of vengeance what is he making reference to who can tell me brothers what is he making reference to the things that's going to be fulfilled let me hear one of you soldiers Shalom, leadership. Hey, uh, Shalom. Those are perilous times because we're going to be upon Israelites. Mm -hmm. But what is he making reference to? This before First Peter. What is Christ talking about? The danger, what it says, uh, the vengeance that all things are written must be fulfilled. All right, let me hear one of the officers. That all things are written. Yes, sir. Shalom, leadership. Uh, it's talking about uh, 70 AD. Yes, but what is he talking about? The things that are written before that must be fulfilled. Oh, all the prophecies uh, of us going through uh, the perilous times. That's the same thing he just said. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, 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 right. You just put it to Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Y'all forgot that this was interactive, huh? <laughs> you just put it to officer. What we got? What we got, Anthony? What is he talking about? Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy there 28. You go, there you the go. things written aforetime will be fulfilled. Deuteronomy 28. 
So read verse 22 uh, again. Verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance. These be the days of vengeance. Remember, this is Christ speaking. These be the days of vengeance. Read. That all things which are written. The things that were written before Christ got there. Deuteronomy 28. Read. May be fulfilled. May be fulfilled. Read verse 23. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Uh huh. For there shall be great distress in the land. Uh huh. And wrath upon this people. Woe unto them that give mm -hmm. suck. Meaning what? They breastfeed or they having babies in that day. Why? Because the days of vengeance are upon us. Let's see why he's saying woe to those days. Deuteronomy 28, yep. verse 53. Deuteronomy 28, verse 53. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. And what? Thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. Uh -huh. The flesh of thy sons uh -huh. and of thy daughters, uh -huh. which the Lord thy God hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith Thine enemies shall distress thee. So, Mishael, what they're saying? That's saying, so long, count on. That's saying, our children. Why? Because we in a perilous time. <laughs> because of what? You right. You right. You ain't wrong by saying perilous times. Because of what? Famine. Okay. Because of the famine where? No, you good. Let me see what Jonathan say. You you was absolutely correct. It's just another word I want. Because of the famine in Jerusalem. Because uh -huh. of starvation. Uh-huh. So, There's another S I want. Um, because of the slavery in Jerusalem? <laughs> let me hear, let me hear, let me hear. Let me show you again. Because of the siege. The siege. Oh, oh. The siege that's going to happen in the land. All right now, here's another one. Where else did this happen at? When else did this happen? Because remember, do the curses only happen once? When else did this happen to our people in history? When else was Jerusalem sieged and we were resorted to eating our own children? You ain't got to have a precept. I just want to know who know the history. Let me get in gad. Let me get in gad. During the time of Babylon. During the Babylonian captivity. Go to Lamentations real quick. Mm -hmm. Lamentations, what is it, Cap 5 or 4? Let's find it real quick. Anthony, if you got it, get it. Yes, sir. Uh, chapter 4. No, let's see. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. The tongue of the sucking child cleave it to the roof of his mouth for thirst. The young children ask bread, and no man breaketh it unto them. Nope, I want 4 and 10. Read yeah, that. Yes, sir. So Verse 10. Eight, but go down, yeah. yeah. The hands of the pitiful woman have sodden their own children. The hands of the pitiful woman have what? Sodden their own children. Sodden means boil. Sodden means to boil. Their own children. Read. They were their meat. They were what? They were their meat. Read. And the destruction of the daughter of my people. Why? The Lamentations is the Lamentations of who? What prophet? Jeremiah, he's lamenting. Why? Because Jerusalem was what? Sieged. It was sieged. It was destroyed at the hand of the Babylonians. Nebuchadnezzar came in, and they destroyed the land. So it was sieged then in 586 B.C., and then it was sieged again in 70 A.D. And guess what? It's going, it, it, we ain't in our land no more, but it's going to get hard again in these times. Because we wasn't in our land in Spain and Portugal, right? But it was still getting so bad that our children were being murdered. We were being burnt alive, so on and so forth. So the curses continued to happen. So that siege means that you don't have what? What are you lacking? We just read it. What are you lacking that will make you boil your child? What are you lacking? Food. How do you know by watching the news today? that we're going back to days like that. What is going on in the earth right now? I want y'all to think about it because, see, you haven't been listening to it for the last month or, or two, but I want you to think how Bishop would go into these birth pains, right? You, There's things that are going to happen, and then they're going to subside, and then come back. 
there was something that was happening like about a year ago, and we were hearing about it almost weekly. Now we're not hearing about it anymore. But it led, well, maybe even more than that, but it led to um, us being told you better stock up food. What was going on? Well, you, you, were, he- you were hear of the, uh, the rumors of, of wars. And- Be more specific. What was going on? It was in the news. And uh, we, we was having, constantly. We was having like a shortage of food in the grocery stores. And How? Everything. That's what I'm getting at. How? There was, there was something that's going on in the earth. Pass the mic. Pass the mic. Y'all got y'all to gotta pay attention. This is why y'all got to pay attention to what's going on in the news. Because when I say it, everybody going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. It was COVID time. COVID-19 pestilence. Mm, okay. Something else. Um, cargo. All right. One more. One more. I'll just give it to y'all. Well, um, there was a period of time where you kept seeing a lot of fires, factories. Yes. What was happening? But go, go ahead. Elaborate. Yes, sir. Um, so pretty much they were destroying. Well, say it was fires that was occurring, but majority of them was fires. on the making scale. Exactly. Yeah, like chicken and exactly. There kept being explosions. Yes, sir. And and these were happening at your your major See if food y'all can find processing. one of those real quick. See if y'all can find yeah, that. The, your, uh, the factories being destroyed. Your major food processing plants. They were having fires. Okay? And at the same time, you got you got the the nerdy guy buying up all the land and destroying farms. Y'all got to pay attention to these things. Hey, Cap, right? not only did you have those factories burning, remember y'all, there was all the train uh, train exactly, crashes. Exactly, exactly. All of that stuff was going on at the same time at leading same up to time. what? Then you had the war going on in Ukraine. Right. And like you said, you had the embargoes. And guess what? You don't feel that stuff immediately because the white man, unlike us, he stock up. Right. Because he got billion-dollar companies that he going to make sure he good. Mm-hmm. But you will feel it in two, three, four years from now. Mm-hmm. And you already feeling it right now with the prices of what stuff costs. Mm-hmm. Y'all found any of them? Any of the articles? All right, bring it up so that people can see it. They don't think we're making stuff up. But they can't call Cap a liar. <laughs> there you go. Numbers of factory fires jumped by 100 100- So those factories that are producing things, are gone. They gone. And you don't just instantly. Good. Take it off the screen. That's an excellent point you brought out, Cap. So, go back to Deuteronomy 28, 53 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 53. Mm-hmm. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, uh-huh. the flesh of thy son's The siege. In the what? The siege. In the siege. In the siege. In the siege. Read. And in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. Because there was a time when the Egyptians and other people, they would try to say uh, the Hebrews or the Israelites, y'all the base people, y'all eat your own children. Yeah, because we were in a siege. That ain't something we do on a normal basis. You have to resort to extreme cases. Y'all got to be able to explain that. That was a curse from God, mm-hmm. the reason why we did that. That wasn't our custom or our tradition, unlike the so-called uh, Egyptians that eat all, all type of stuff, and the Chinese man. We ain't like that. <laughs> got to be near death to do those things. So, how, where do we go? Bishop been going over this every week. Where do we go to show that these curses continue to happen over and over and over again? Where can we go? Yeah, that's why I like teaching with people in the room. I can ask people questions. Mm-hmm. Appreciate y'all for showing up. Because mm-hmm. I don't like to talk to myself. I like to talk <laughs> to the people. That's why I tell these brothers, they got to come to class. Got to come to class. Where we go? Where we go, brothers? Where we go? I don't want to hear y'all saying All right, there we go, Mishael. What we got? Second Edgeverse 5 and 42. Oh, okay. praise it, brother. Been taking notes. Oh, praise I've yes. been taking notes. Let's get that. Second Ezra 5 and 42. The book of Second Ezra chapter 5, verse 42. Mm-hmm. And he said unto me, 
I will liken my judgment unto a ring. I will liken my judgment unto a ring. A ring has no start or no finish. It continues. Read. Like as there is no slackness of the last. Uh huh. Even so, there is no swiftness of the first. You see that? It just continues to happen over and over. That's why kingdoms come and go. They all last about 250 to 280 years. That's how long most kingdoms rule. And then the next kingdom comes. And guess what? Then it falls. Then the next kingdom comes. And then what? Then it falls over and over and over again until the Israelites restore themselves as the, the, the rulers of the earth. And then our kingdom going to rule forever. And then it'll be on that ring for a long time. But right now we're on the heathen ring. All right. Uh, from there, go to Deuteronomy 28 and 46. Let's back that up. He likened his judgment to a ring. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. Mm -hmm. And they shall be upon thee for a sign uh -huh. and for a wonder uh -huh. and upon thy seed forever. And upon thy seed forever. Until when? Until we repent. Until Amos, is it Amos, uh, Joel 5 and 15. Was, no, Hosea 5 Hosea and 15. 5, 15 yeah. Until we repent of our sins. We're going to continue to have these curses placed upon us. Over and over and over again. So we just, the reason why we went through all those scriptures was to show what? Perilous times, right? Y'all remember that, right? Then we went to Luke 21 to show you what was going on. Christ said, hey, the vengeance shall will be fulfilled. What was the vengeance he was speaking about? Deuteronomy 28. He's speaking about the siege. But guess what? Those perilous times, Paul is warning you about them as well. So not only did it happen during Ezekiel time, during Jeremiah time, during Christ time, it's going to happen during our time as well. All of us going to get proved. All of us. Go ahead. Read, read that. The book of 2 Timothy chapter two, 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. In the last days, perilous times shall come. Read. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. For what? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Uh-huh. Covetous. Covetous. Boasters. Boasters. Proud. Proud. Blasphemers. Uh-huh. Disobedient to parents. Uh-huh. Unthankful. Unholy. Uh-huh. Without natural affection. Uh-huh. Truce breakers. That's the key part. Truce breakers. Read. False ac accusers. False accusers. Read. Incontinent. Uh-huh. Fierce. Uh-huh. Despisers of those that are good. Uh-huh. Traitors. 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 Now, remember, the title of the class was what? The rebirth of what? Crypto Jews. Right now, you really can't have a traitor, so to speak. You could. If somebody went to your boss and they said you're an Israelite, uh, they'd be like, Okay. It wouldn't be immediate. They may look into it. They may not. But there's going to come a time when the temperature is so hot that if somebody is a traitor and they go and they report you on, on, on what you do and what you believe in, that's death. Or they're going to come take your house or they take your clothes or whatever. Whatever it may be, that's, that's what it's speaking about. And even though that happens today, you know, brothers, they, they go – they tell your boss, hey, he 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 an Israelite, they show on the camp videos. They may look at it. You may be able to go to HR or whatnot. Nah, that ain't what they're speaking about. There's gonna be a time where everybody's worshiping one God. Everybody's on the same accord. And if you ain't on that on that same wavelength, it's gonna be a trial like like Paul had. <laughs> That's what it's gonna get to. Traitors. Truth breakers, that's what it's speaking about. And guess what? Not only those on the outside, but those what? On the inside. Remember, was Judas a white man? Judas was black. Judas was one of the 12 disciples. That's the level of traitor and truth breaker that, that uh, Timothy is speaking about. That's what it's going to get to. That's why it says the rebirth of the crypto Jew. Because not only are we going to have to be in secret, you're going to have to worry about who you trust with what you know. Because like, uh, I just saw Yaziel, just like the video we brought up a while back. We was on Lions Den. Some people are going to want to go back to their normal life. And I'm like, I don't want to do this no more. I'm tired of having to do this in secret. 
we got to meet up some random place just to read the read the Bible. I just want to enjoy myself. This is this is weird. Why why are we why are we in the woods? I thought Tabernacles was a week. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's gonna be like. It's gonna so, get real. It's gonna get real. It's gonna get real. So let's prove that. Revelation thirteen verse twelve. Revelation chapter thirteen verse twelve. We're gonna read down. Because right now, you don't really have one side. What do we have in America? What do we have in America that shows that it ain't that hot right now? Let me hear from y'all saying that. Um, well, I want to say freedom of speech, but you got freedom of religion. There right you now. go. Freedom of religion. So you can't really be a traitor when you got freedom of religion. Oh, he worship. He's, a, he's in the nation of Islam. Okay. Well, the first commandment says, you know, you can worship whatever God he wants. Elijah's all right. Yaziel's okay. He's he can he can worship uh, whatever he believes. <laughs> Yadiel is good. Ahia Ahia Israel is fine. <laughs> he can worship whatever he believes. But there's gonna come a time where if everybody don't bow the knee, mm-hmm. no, that's not working. Oh, what do you mean you don't worship white Jesus? Who? Which one? Him right there, Master. Oh, okay. Let me call the sources and we'll get them taken care of. And, and you know, you guys, y'all brothers got to think. You have um, people on your jobs, have people in the neighborhood. Um, they might be struggling financially. Right. They might have record. Beyond that, uh, you know, one more strike. Mm. Uh, because remember now when um, uh, Bishop brought this out before, what was the brother that, that started the fires and mm. stuff? Um, he he yeah, was a yeah, car yeah. thief. Yep, yep. William O'Neill? William O'Neill, yep. He was it. a car thief, and they used that against him. Yep. Esau does not change his tactics. Yep. Okay? So it's going to be people like that again. Some coming in here. Like Cap said, right? So um, I hope y'all taking notes and y'all paying real close attention because these days are not that far away. Yep. Uh, read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 12. Uh-huh. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast uh-huh. before him. Read. And causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. The first beast is Rome. America made everybody worship Rome. Why? Because we follow the same politics, the same thing that Rome did. That's how America is. Read. Whose deadly womb was healed. Whose deadly womb was healed. Rome fell, came back during the Renaissance period all the way up until today. Read. And he doeth great wonders. He doeth great wonders. The America has invented the Internet. They invented the car. They invented the cell phone. They invented Wi-Fi. They invented uh, 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 what are computers. Airplanes. Everything. Airplanes. Whatever you name it, all great inventions was right here in America. Simply Lemonade, all of it (laughs) was made in America. (laughs) Read. And he doeth great wonders Uh so that he maketh fire come down from heaven. What does it mean he makes fire come down from heaven? All right, let me hear uh, uh, Soldier Jonathan. The nuke, sir. Yes, sir. What do you do? What do you mean, the he, nuke? He created the atom bomb. Uh huh. Where did he drop it at? He dropped it in uh, Nero. How do you say that? <laughs> Hiroshima and Nakasaki. Hiroshima and Nakasaki. Yes, sir. Nakasaki. Big That's boy, where he dropped man. it at. Small boy, big boy. Small boy and big boy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, he hey. made fire come down from him. Go ahead. I, w- I want y'all to tie this together. Go back and read the first part of, of 12. Verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast. Of the first beast. Go ahead. Before him. Mm -hmm. And causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, Mm -hmm. whose deadly wound was healed. Mm -hmm. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So now these things that he's doing so that the world would worship who? The beast, which comes with what? And what? Starts with an I. Image. An image. Come on, brothers. 
an image. Reason I'm, I'm saying it like that is because when you're teaching, what do our people love to say? When we're teaching about an image, what do our people love to say? Don't matter. But we're showing you that this man went through great lengths to make sure that you worshiped him. Okay? Same thing we read in 2 Thessalonians. Go ahead, Cap. We'll, we'll touch on it. Oh, you hit it on the head. Re, uh, read verse 13 again. Verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth mm -hmm. in the sight of men. In the sight of men. Because everybody saw it. They got video of it to this day. Right. Everybody knows what happened. And that's how you know it had to happen during a certain time. Read. And deceive it them that dwell on the earth. You know what? Hold on a second. Yeah. Because you know what? I remember hearing back 9-11, back, uh, right? I remember hearing white boys run around saying, and they say it to this day, just nuke their asses. You know what I'm saying? White boys love to say that. Bomb them, nuke them, because they know that this American military has the power to do that. And that's a lot of times the answer to the problem. You, you know what? Just why are we even sending troops there? Just drop a bomb on them. And everybody knows that the American government has the power to do that. 100%. 100%. So, uh, read it again, verse 13. Verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth mm -hmm. in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. By the means of those miracles. That's why nobody has touched America since then. Japan messed around and bombed uh, uh, Hawaii, Pearl Harbor. Ain't nobody touched American soil since. And that ain't really American soil. We was talking, I was talking about this with Captain, you did. They bombed Hawaii. Bombing Hawaii is like you see 10 tall people and you see one short guy. You're like, hey, let's, let's pick on him. Hawaii ain't nowhere near America. Right. Like, yeah, we got y'all. Like, come on, man. That ain't, that ain't American soil. But eh, I guess if that's what y'all want to say. Now, when they when they then when they crashed the towers, mm -hmm. now Ishmael yes, Ishmael right. got some balls. Right, he hit he hit America, but it's still just two buildings. I don't know if y'all saw in Gaza yet. <laughs> they got two buildings. Right, that right. lets you know how powerful America is. They hit two buildings and they was excited, like yeah, we got them. Meanwhile, America would drop bombs on your city till you have nothing. Nothing. I forgot, it was like 16,000 bombs they dropped while Barack Obama was the president. They, they hit two buildings in, a, in New York. You ever been to New York? There's a, tons of buildings. They got two. They thought they did something. They'll let you know, this man is a powerful man. They rejoice. They still rejoicing about their thing. Yeah, they, yep. they, I know they, they, they bombed. Mm -hmm. We living in a shell now in Iraq over here in Pakistan, uh, Afghanistan, but we got them twin towers. Yeah, great job. All right. Read verse 14 again. Verse 14. And deceive it them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles uh -huh. which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Read. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. That they should make an image to the beast. Caesar Borgia. Read. Which had the wound by a sword. By a sword. By a sword uh -huh. and did live. I know that W is hard, man. Go ahead. <laughs> right. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Read. That the image of the beast should both speak. Should both speak. And cause that as many as would not worship the Those image. Those that would not worship the image. This is the Spanish Inquisition right here. And it's going to lead all the way up until today in the last days. That's Daniel when they went and worship, uh, uh, what's it called? Be by all? No, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's statue. Yes, yes, the statue that he built. Mm -hmm. That's in Maccabees. Mm -hmm. That's going to lead up in here into America. It's going to come a time where there's going to be a one world religion. And if you do not worship that beast, you will not live. Read it again. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, mm -hmm. that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Should be what? Should be killed. Should be killed. Revelation 6 real quick in verse 9. 
Revelations chapter 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. The souls of them that were slain for the word of God, read. And for the testimony which they held. You see that? The testimony which they held. So what's that? That, give, that should give you uh, inspiration. Some of us going to keep the testimony. We're going to die for this truth. And you pray that you can be in that number if it comes to it. Like Bishop always say, everybody ain't going to be that person. We all ain't going to go through that persecution. But some of us will be strong enough to take death for the name of Christ. Keep reading. Verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, mm -hmm. How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Read. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them, that they should rest yet a little season. That they should rest for a little season, read. Until their fellow servants. Until what? Their fellow servants. Until their fellow servants, read. Also, and their brethren that should be killed as they were. Hold on, that what? That should be killed as they were. Uh-huh. Should be fulfilled. What is that letting you know? It's going to get to that time again. Well, you are going to be killed as our brethren were before time. But guess what? You're going to be able to do it. You're going to be strong enough. That's why I don't know if y'all paying attention. These classes that's being brought out by the bishops and deacons is on another level. So we can build up our faith. So you can build up your faith understanding that the kingdom that's going to be built is 1,500 miles high and wide. You're like, shoot, all right, cool. I have a kingdom, an everlasting kingdom. I ain't going to have to go to work. Right, right, right. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Cap. Hey, I'm going to read this myself right quick because I want to show you, you know, like we bought out 2nd Ezra 5, right, mm -hmm. about the ring. I just want to hit a couple of key points. I'm going to read it myself. But go back to Revelations uh, 13. I'll read it for you. 13. Revelation okay. chapter 13 and verse 13. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven mm -hmm. on the earth in the sight of men. So now what did that cause amongst the people when he did that? What did that cause amongst the people? Fear. Mm -hmm. Same tactics. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't change what he does. Go back to Maccabees right quick. First Maccabees 1 and 20. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 20. And after that Antiochus had smitten Egypt, he returned again in the hundred forty and third year and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude. Jump down to verse 25. Verse 25. Therefore, there was great mourning. No, no, I'm sorry. 24. Verse 24, and when he had taken all away, he went into his own land, having made a great massacre. Having made what? A great massacre. Uh-huh. And spoken very proudly. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there was a great mourning in Israel, in every place where they were. Now jump down to verse 41. Verse 41, moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, mm -hmm. and every one should leave his laws so all the heathen. Agreed according to the commandment of the king. You see that? He caused fear, and then he says, you know what? Let's all be one people. Yep. <laughs> Same thing we did. Look, our people just got done celebrating Thanksgiving. Right, right. What does he do? He massacres you. Yep. And then he says, let's all get along. Yep. <laughs> that's heavy. Go to Habakkuk real quick. Go to Habakkuk. That, that, hey, that's biblical what Cap bringing out. That's, that's heavy right there. Go to Habakkuk. I want, and they, uh, they changed their God. Yep. Habakkuk 1 and verse, verse 11. 11. Yep. Habakkuk Started chapter 10. 1, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. Uh-huh. They shall deride every stronghold. You see that? They deride every stronghold. They came into our temple, defiled it. Mm -hmm. They went to Japan, bombed it. Read. For they shall heap dust and take it. Uh-huh. Then shall his mind change. Then shall his mind change. After he bomb you, right. after he kill you, after he put blankets, he want to put uh, smallpox blankets, after he want to do a Tuskegee experiment, then he want to hold hands with you during the civil rights movement. Right. Then he want to say, ah, oh, let's come together. Let's all be one. What, what this? No, no, no. We can't. We can't. We can't be living in separate communities. Mm -mm. Why would we do that? Let's scratch that. Let's all live together. You can come to my church. We can worship God together. John 3.16, brother. Damn. <laughs> Read it again. 
Then shall his mind change. Then shall his mind change. After he realized, damn, where the rest of the people at? <laughs> oh, all right, well, let's start. Let's take that woman and then we'll, then we'll all be together. Read. And he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power unto his God. Right. Then they want to put it unto white man Jesus. Then they want to, what do they call it again? Manifest, manifest destiny. After you murder everybody, then you say this was God's plan. Right. That we, no, that didn't, God didn't set you up to murder everybody. That was your plan because you wanted riches and gold in a new land. That was never God's intention. That was your intention. So go back to Revelation. What, what was that, Revelation? Six. That's six. Yes, 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 yes. Well, we read all the way down to 15. Yes. So. We read about there's going to come a time where those that don't worship the beast will die. Daniel 3. Daniel chapter 3. We're going to read verse 1 down to 8. We're going to show you. So I'm going to give you a few examples. I'm going to give you one example real quick in the Bible where that came to pass. And remember, his judgment is like a what? Green. So in all these different captivities, if you read into the captivities, certain things happen it's going to happen again in different aspects, but it's going to be the same thing. Go ahead. The book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, mm -hmm. whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. Mm -hmm. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. So he set up a false idol. In, the, in Revelation, it calls it the image of the beast. It ain't the same thing, but what I'm showing you is going to get to that. Well, they're going to want everything to worship one way, one idol, whatever. That's like you got the, uh, we've been, Bishop brought it out for like four months straight, dealing with the three major religions, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. That's why they got the three Abrahamic faiths over there. And what city was it built in? Yeah, in Dubai. They got the three faiths all together showing you. That's what they want to get to, a multi-faith society all obligated into one. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Uh -huh. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and the, all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Hello, mm. Cap. Before you go any further, oh, yeah. you think about, like, when they had those ribbon ceremonies now. What mm. it, just the same thing we reading. They do the exact same thing today. Yep. Go ahead. Keep reading. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then and herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, Dosimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Now, this is very similar today. What, what was that, about four years ago? No. How long Kaepernick been out now? Been, been a while. Y'all don't yeah, forget yeah, who he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> All right. Kaepernick. That's what everybody stand and rise. Yep. He did that. They financially murdered him. He's yep. still out the league to this day. To Ain't this been back. Day. Because he wouldn't stand up. And observe the idols how they wanted him to. The same thing, different story. It wasn't, it wasn't deaf. Like I said, it's going to get to the point where it's going to be to deaf. But right now they show you on different levels how they will excommunicate you. And how you will be ostracized if you don't get down with what mm -hmm. the main thing is. That it ain't no melting pot. Mm -hmm. It ain't no melting pot when you go against what they deem right. Go ahead. And whoso falleth not down and worship it, all the same, all shall. Su I'm sorry. And whoso follow, falleth not down and worship it, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Uh huh. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people. The nations and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, at that time, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near uh -huh. and accused the Jews. They did what? Mm. And accused the Jews. You see that? The king didn't see them. 
It was some traitors. Remember we read about in 2 Timothy, you're going to have traitors and truth breakers. They were waiting for an opportunity to turn them in. They're like, hey, look, look. They ain't doing what everybody else doing. That's what it's going to be like. Hey, look, them sisters ain't wearing pants. Mm. I told you, that's them Jews over there. Right, right. Them Those Israelites. dangly things on their yep. dresses. They think they better than everybody, boss. They don't, nah, they, they don't go to church on Sunday, boss. Mm. They go on Saturday. Yeah, and they wear purple garments. Hey, and that tells you, sisters, uh, you know, we've had some incidents before with sisters uh, talking reckless. Right. You know, don't do that, sister. Yep, right, right, right. <laughs> Giving don't up do all that. the intel to every, right. anybody don't you don't know do who that. you're dealing with. Like I say, you don't know who you're dealing with. That's why we say we here for a family reunion. Mm. It's just a family reunion. All y'all say all black people look alike, right? Yep. Because God's going to kill you. So we just family. <laughs> <laughs> don't Thanks, do sister. That. Uh, yeah. All right, go to Ecclesiastes <laughs> 1 in verse 9. So I'm showing you. How they rolled in the past. In the past, they set up idols for you to worship them. If you didn't worship them, death. Revelation 13 tells you that you're going to get deaf if you don't worship the image of the beast. Ecclesiastes 1, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9. The thing that had been, it is that which shall be. Uh-huh. And that which is done is that which shall be done. Uh-huh. And there is no new thing under the sun. The thing that it's speaking about is man, spirits. Ecclesiastes 6 and 10. You ain't got to go there. It's talking about man. So there's no new thing under the sun. That's why what? The same things keep happening over and over again. Israel sin, the most high sin prophets, saviors, we get out of we get out of captivity. Israel sin, we go into captivity. He sent prophets, saviors, we get out of captivity. And guess what? The heathen, they keep giving us things to worship. They give us idols. We worship the idols. And then what? We don't worship the idols. They kill us. The same thing over and over and over again until this last captivity. Go ahead, Cap. You have something? No, no. You, so sure. go to uh, Psalms 96 and 5 real quick. Psalms 96 and 5. So it says there's no new thing under the sun. Read that. The book of Psalms chapter 96 verse 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols. So as long as we're in captivity, what they worship is going to be idols. And they always want to get to a one world religion, one nationality, one people. They want to do away with race. That's what they always want to do. Why do they want to do away with race so bad? Because they understand when you know who you are, they are going to be relegated to the bottom of society where they're supposed to be at. That's why it says he's going to be thrown back into the pit. <laughs> that's where Esau going, into the pit. Because that's where he always was supposed to be. He on the loose right now. And that's why the world is jacked up. Homosexuals all over the place, transsexual, pansexual, whatever. Craziness. All right? So, from there, understanding the things that's going to come, Second Peter 3 and 10. How should we be rolling? How should we be acting with the understanding that we have, with the knowledge that we have? How should we speak to the other nations? How should we build relationships with those that ain't in the world but may be Israel? Should we be building connections with brothers and sisters just because they don't believe don't mean they can't be an asset to you in different trying times in this world? Understanding that what? You may lose your job at any time. Meanwhile, you ain't got no relationship with your parents who can help. Because they want to help you, and they're able to help you. Or your friends in the world that have certain things that can be of benefit to you. Because we understand what's going to be coming in the future. Read that. Book of Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 10. Mm -hmm. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. I want 11. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation? So when you read this in context, it's talking about the end, when Christ returns. But I want to I wanna relate it to seeing the persecution that's going to come upon us. How should we be acting today, understanding that these things are going to happen? Knowing that what? We may have to flee the city. Christ told us to be pilgrims upon the earth. Understanding that, what manner of person should we be understanding that what? There's going to be a famine in the land. 
understand that what? We're going to be ostracized. We're going to be persecuted. How should we roll and navigate and prepare ourselves today understanding what's going to come? Read it again. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, mm -hmm. what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? In all holy conversation and godliness. You guys uncap? No, no, not yet. Go to uh, Luke 16 and 9. So understanding that how should we roll while we have the freedom to do the things that we do and profess the things that we profess and be able to navigate this world freely if you use wisdom, how should we utilize that? Read that. Luke chapter 16, verse 9. Uh-huh. And I say unto you, Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. God says make friends with the mammon of unrighteousness. What does that mean? Somebody tell me. I hear one of the men. Again, we can uh, have friends or associates that are unbelievers, whether they're heathens or whether they're Israelite unbelievers. Right. Make to yourself friends. Does that mean, does that mean I can have a white friend? You and Bobby can be friends. You and Billy can be friends. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Read it again, read it again, read it again. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Uh-huh. That when ye fail. That what? That when ye fail. That when you lose your job. They read. May, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. That when you lose your job, your car broke down, you get fired, whatever may happen. You want to have some people that's able to assist you. And they ain't always other other nations. That may be family members. That may be friends. That may be your college roommate. Whatever. You want to keep those connections and those. I read a book. Uh, I forgot. I think it was called um, Outliers. I think that's what it's called. It's a Malcolm Gladwell book. Anyway. But he talks about that loose ties are stronger than strong ties. What does that mean? Somebody that you meet on an associate basis is willing to help you before your own brother or sister sometimes. You may have helped this person do something a long time ago, and they'll help you out. Meanwhile, your own brother, i give you an example. My own brother, he make good money. College football coach. Good money. It's multiple six figures. I say, hey, bro, my transmission broke. You can help me? Yeah, I can help you. I ain't heard from him in five months. Meanwhile... Oh, you mean now? You need to help now? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it'll be somebody you just met. Yeah. You just met or give you an opportunity like that you can you can you can't create for yourself. Mm. Loose ties are stronger than some some than strong ties. Understand, never forget that. You never know who you're helping with. There's many stories you'll read about somebody, they was a tutor for somebody's child, and then they know you're the hard time, they leave them a house. Like, damn. He saw, you know, they leave their dog stuff, you know? You never know. You, you ain't never lied to. You never know. But you never know who you're dealing with and who can help you. You never know who can help you. I got a script go ahead, on go that ahead, right quick. Uh, give me First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. Hmm? First Timothy 3 verse 7. The book of First Timothy chapter 3 verse 7. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. What does that part mean? Them that are without. So you have a good report with those that are broke as hell. That what you're saying? Somebody else. Good report of them that are without. Give you a precept to help you out because I ain't going to just give you the answer. See if somebody got it, though. Shalom, meaning so, them that are without the body. Like okay, the outside, job, outside the truth. Not. Okay, so, read it again. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, mm -hmm. lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So this is showing you how we must carry ourselves. Going back into what Cap was saying about, you know, there'll be some that'll help you, but you know what? If you, if, if you let's just say something small, you get a flat tire on the job. Right, everybody else gone. But it's that one person that, that uh, uh, 
You don't even speak to her often. But you know what? Because every time you see him in the morning, hey, good morning, Bob, or whatever the case may be, you know, he don't have no animosity towards you. But if you all, he'd be like, hey, good morning, Anathia. Yeah, you white devil. <laughs> that brother not going to be ready to help you. Or that guy's not going to be ready to help you. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Go back to Luke 16. Yeah, that's one of my favorite scriptures. You got to have a good report with them that are without. Mm -hmm. Read that. Luke 16. Luke chapter 16, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Read. That when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. So when you fail, they can receive you into everlasting habitations. So what does that mean? Some people, some people, it, it, it's like giving you a crumb for them to give you uh, uh, stuff that you won't even imagine. That is a crumb to them, believe it or not. You read about these billionaires that just, they, 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 they donate millions of dollars. It's like, yeah, uh, go ahead. We can do it. People got it like that. Some people, they, they able to assist you because they got it like that. But if you won't have that good report like Cap just brought out with those that are without, that won't happen for you. All right? For there, go to uh, Genesis 41. I'm going to give you an example of somebody that had good report with those without. Meaning what? Those that wasn't Israelites. And he dealt the right way. And because of that, he was rewarded. Any of y'all ever heard of Joseph? I'll give you the story of Joseph real quick. We can't read all of it. Because I only got so much time, and y'all show up late. But I'm going to give y'all some of it. I'm going to give y'all some of it. All right? Go ahead. Genesis 41, starting verse 33. Book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 33. Uh-huh. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Hold on, hold on. Did that say God? Let Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Is Pharaoh an Israelite? No. But he said, let me, let me look out for this Israelite. Read. A man discreet and wise and set him over hold the on, land. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me get y'all let me get y'all a trick question. Who are the Egyptians in today's society? Not not like literally Egyptians. Who are they compared to? Who does God say is Egypt today? Let me hear uh let me hear uh Soldier David. Only ship. Um, sure. It'll be um, Esau. 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 So somebody that God don't deal with, he's utilizing them to put us in positions of power that we can help other people. Understand that. So if he can use the Pharaoh to bless us, guess who he can use? He can use Esau. He can use Esau to bless you. And that don't mean that Esau good. That don't mean he blessed not. Nah. That don't mean he going to get the kingdom. That ain't what that means. Boy, it do mean that if you carry yourself the right way, God will take care of it. Go ahead, read that. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt mm -hmm. in the seven plenteous years. Mm -hmm. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Jump down to verse uh, 37. Verse 37, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. So Joseph gave Pharaoh the counsel of how to deal when the famine comes. And that was, he said, you know what? That's wise counsel. I'm going to do that. Read. And in the eyes of all his servants, and Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the spirit of God is? He knew that the, the, the Lord was dealing with this man. A heathen understood that. He like, man, something different about him. Read. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God had showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Uh -huh. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto my, thy word shall all my people be ruled. Uh -huh. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Read. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. So was Joseph, Joseph in sin? No. Because he was doing what he was supposed to. And ultimately, what did he do with his position of power? 
He saved the nation. He saved the nation. It also lets you know everybody ain't going to be in the same predicament. The same way he said there's going to be the poor amongst us always, mm -hmm. it's going to be brothers in position of power always. There's going to be people in different positions. And guess what? They ain't going to be, be able to do what me and you do. They ain't going to be able to be on the streets. They ain't going to be able to be on YouTube and on Twitter and all that. But they're going to be able to help us when famine come. Because what? They got money. They ain't oppressed. They don't need no stimulus check. <laughs> they couldn't get cleared for the stimulus check because they got it. But guess what? The Lord going to allow them to, the spirit to be on them that they can help those that are without. Go ahead, Cap. They got so much money, they wrote laws that they can give some money away so they can write it off on their oh. taxes. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, from there, <laughs> that was the example of Joseph. Joseph has status in captivity. Then you know what? We're going to have brothers today, sisters today, that's going to have a certain status. They're going to have a certain financial means to make things happen. Um, first Ezra's 3 and verse 1. We're going to read 1, and then we're going to jump to verse 4. First Ezra's. Is that verse 1? Yep. First Ezra's chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now when Darius reigned, he made a great feast unto all his subjects and unto all his household. And unto all the princes of Media and Persia. Right. Darius was the ruler over the Median Persian Empire. Uh-huh. Jump down to four. Verse four. Then three young men that were of the guard that kept the king's body spake one to another. So there were three young men that kept the king's body. What does that mean? What does that mean? They kept the king's body. They were the king's bodyguard. What's the king's bodyguard today? Secret service. That's the highest level. Navy SEAL, whatever. That's the highest level. They were, they were, one of them was an Israelite. One of them was an Israelite. Jump, go to uh, chapter 4 and verse 13. Let's see what this was. Chapter, first Ezra chapter 4, verse 13. Uh-huh. Then the third who had spoken of women and of the truth. And you can hear out of his speech... God. Read. This was Zerubbabel. This was who? Zerubbabel began to speak. Zerubbabel kept the king's body. He was a bodyguard, and he's written of in the scriptures. A man of status, of power, ability, wisdom, because he understood what the strongest thing on the earth was. So he wasn't no dummy, but he had position. He had power in captivity while the Medes and Persians we're ruling. Showing you what? Once again, you got, while we got this time, we got to make what? Friends with the mammon of the earth while you can. From there, go to uh, Esther, chapter 2. I'm going to read verse 5 through 7, and we're going to jump to verse 11. Book of Esther, chapter 2, verse 5. Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew mm -hmm. whose name was Mordecai, mm -hmm. the son of Jair, the son of Shammai, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. Said jump. Yep. No, you. that's seven? Uh, no, sir. Read down to seven. Who, carry, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, mm -hmm. whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. Uh -huh. And he brought up Hadassah. That is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mo mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful. That means we're going to have sisters that's bad amongst us. All right, brothers, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Read. Whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. Uh-huh. Jump down to verse 10. Verse 10. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred. Read it again. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred. She hadn't showed who she was. She didn't show her hand. She didn't show up on the job and fill out, oh, I don't see a uh, black Hebrew Israelite on here, sir. <laughs> Could you add that, please, to the resume? Yes, I'm an Israelite. I, I'm not black. I am not Haitian. I am not oh, non-African. So you shouldn't be doing that on a job, huh? I'm not non-African Hispanic. That's not what I am. You put other and write in Israelite. I'm no longer working the Sabbath because I'm an Israelite. <laughs> I just found out yesterday. 
So it says, she showed her people nor her kindred. They didn't know what she was. What did that also tell you? Was she talking? No, she was quiet. She played her role as her uncle, a cousin. I think that was his cousin, right? Yes. Told her. Read. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred. For Mordecai. For had, who? For Mordecai had char- charged her that she should not show it. That, also, she listened to a man. That's wow. Right. That's right. She listened. Sisters, I learned to listen. She didn't say, why, why I can't tell them? Yeah, you can read that again. Can't why I can't tell them that I'm an Israelite? I'm proud. Damn. I'm an Israelite. I didn't even know that was in the Bible. <laughs> I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> Got to tell everybody. <laughs> read it again. Read it again. Read it again. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, mm-hmm. for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. Uh-huh. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the woman's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. So he checked up every day. He's like, all right, let me see. She doing what she's supposed to. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to keep it moving today. Come back the next day. Slide in. All right, good, good. Okay. That's how he was rolling. He made sure that she did exactly what she was supposed to do. Because he had a plan. I ain't told nobody. Dang. Right. (laughs) What you say? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he made sure because he had plans for her. now go to Esther 8 let's see what happened what became of her because she was able to maneuver and get in a certain position because nobody knew who she was or what she was doing sometimes showing if y'all ever play a card you play spades some people try to cheat they try to see what you, what you got in your hand see how many spades you got we ain't gonna talk about spades can't right <laughs> If I know how many spades you got, if I know what you got in your hand, it's easy for me to play. They try to count the books, count the cards. Y'all know some of y'all cheat. All right? But if you don't know what I got in my hand, you can't get me. Right? That's how we got to be in these last days. Don't let everybody know what you got in your hand. They don't need to know everything about you. They ask you why you were dressed, and I like it. It fits my body right. Why you got them things on the bottom of your shirt, brother? Yeah, you ain't seen it. Yeah, this is, this was here now. It was on Vogue magazine. <laughs> what everybody wearing? Yeah, I ain't. I don't even know. I didn't even know it was down there. Dang, you just showed me something. I just like this shirt. That's how you gotta be. That's how you gotta be. Go ahead, read that. Esther eight verse seven. We're gonna read down to thirteen. The book of Esther chapter eight verse seven. Mm-hmm. Then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen. And to Mordecai the Jew, behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, mm-hmm. because he had laid his hand upon the Jews. Read. Write ye also for the Jews, as it liketh you, the king's name. And so Hold on, it. so read verse 7 again. Let me make sure we get it. So, Haman wrote a decree to kill the Jews. Esther ended up getting position in the king's heart, and he didn't know that she was a Jew. But he revealed it at the right time. And the king said, hey, whatever you want, Esther, that's what we're going to do. Because you bad. I want you in the house. You got to be around me. So whatever you want, we're going to do it. Mm. Go ahead. Read verse 7. Verse 7. Then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman. I have given Esther the house of Haman. He said, I'm going to give him over to you. Read. And him they have hanged upon the gallows. And they hung Haman. Read. Because he, had, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Mm-hmm. Write ye also for the Jews, as it liketh you, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. Uh-huh. Then were the king's scribes called at that time in the third month. That is, the month Savan. Mm-hmm. And on the... Three and twentieth day thereof, and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews, and to the lieutenants and the deputies and the rulers of the provinces which are from India unto Ethiopia, and hundred and seven, I'm sorry, and hundred twenty and seven provinces uh-huh. unto every province according to the writing thereof, and unto every people after their language, mm-hmm. and to the Jews according to their writing and according to their language. Jump to verse eleven. 
verse 11. Wherein the king granted the Jews which were in every city. The to, Jews that were in every city, read. To gather themselves together uh -huh. and to stand for their life. He said, hey, y'all can fight back, read. To destroy. To destroy. To slay. Uh-huh. And to cause to perish all the people, all the power of the people uh -huh. and province that would assault them. Read. Both little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. So, he flipped the script. He said, hey, man, everything that was supposed to be bad for y'all, I'm going to make it good. That's what happened. But it was because Esther made friends with the mammon of the earth because Mordecai understood that she had to play a certain role in that time. Those are the things we have to do today. And guess what? That was another example in what? Were we ruling there during that time? We were in captivity. And guess what? When you're in captivity, you got to maneuver a certain way. Everybody can't know everything that's going on because we ain't in power. So you got to maneuver your way around people that have position and influence so that you can have a little bit, and hopefully they uh, will side with you through the, through the most high. Go to Matthew 10 and 16. Don't be no Al Sharpton. <laughs> yeah, don't know. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. I ain't telling you to get into politics. It ain't the way. Book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Behold. I see you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents. Be what? Be therefore wise as serpents. Y'all ever seen a snake move? Y'all y'all that's been been in Florida. I know the brothers, y'all been cutting grass. You see a snake out there, right? A snake will be in front of you and it be going quick, right? You don't even know it was there. It'll, it'll get right up on you. You jump. Oh, dang. Oh. And then it's gone. You don't know what happened to it. That's how we got to be. That's how we got to be. The conversation changed. They started talking about the Bible. Next thing you know, like, damn, what? where that brother went? Out of there. They don't know what's going on. We got to learn how to maneuver in and out of certain situations that could be dangerous or how to maneuver in situations that could be beneficial. But you got to have wisdom to be able to navigate in those situations. Read it again. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Mm -hmm. Be therefore wise as serpents. Be wise as serpents. Know when to interject. Know how to read the room, which people you can speak to, which people you can't. Which people that may have an ear to certain things and which people don't. All y'all know there's certain people on the job, the coon, that don't give a damn about the Bible. They don't care. They looking for, they looking for everything else. Then you may have that one brother that don't know nothing. But he may have a heart for his people, but he lost. So you know how to interject something every once in a while just to see. Put it down just to see what he pick up. Okay, yeah, nah, that's true. Like, hey, man, you know, I don't really believe the Bible because, you know, it's the white man book. But, you know, I, 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 you know, I navigate with my people. Like, oh, really? Well, you know, the Bible's actually written by a black man. Yeah? Oh, okay. Whereas if you go, you see a brother that say, that's stuck on white man Jesus, leave him alone. You better run. You try to go against him, next thing you know, he talking to the boss. He looking you up. Look, master, Captain Kimuel, captain of 100. Yep. Take him in. <laughs> That's how it be. You got to know who you're dealing waiting with. waiting on me when I get to right, work. Right, right. Yeah, nigga ain't going to embarrass me talking about it. I don't know John 316. Can't do that. So. You know what's funny about that, Cap? What happened? It happened. And, and I got a witness. <laughs> I do have a witness in the building. He did try to set me up on my job. Dang. Yeah, they did. Yep. And 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 it flipped back on a door of the kingdom. Yep. He was in on it. I didn't know it. Damn. And he was doing something, and I was trying to protect him. Yeah. And he didn't listen to me. But he got caught up in the traffic. <laughs> That thing was trying to you, send for me. Yep. Yep. All praises. That's how the most I work. Yep. So, we have to know how to navigate. Go to Acts 25. I want to give you all an example of Paul. Paul was lied on, talked about, mistreated. Paul was very, very wise in how he navigated certain situations. And I want to show you all how he navigated in this situation where he was brought before 
the governors, priests, and everybody. And it's funny, me and Cat was just reading this. We we we, we didn't even uh talk about this specific instance. But when we got up here today, we was putting together a class, we was like, man, I was reading this. I was reading the same thing. It's like, yeah, we need to make that a movie. Like, dang, I said the same thing. <laughs> because when you read Acts 25, the way Paul dealt with with the uh with the officials, he a cold man. So we're gonna hop around because I've been talking too much, so time almost. All right. Acts 25, start at verse 7. We're going to read down 11. Acts chapter 25, verse 7. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem mm -hmm. stood round about uh -huh. and laid many and, gre and grievous, grievous. grievous complaints against Paul. So, the Jews made many complaints against Paul. Just imagine if they're they writing this Bible today and they're talking about the bishops or the deacons. How many complaints you think they don't made against them? Hundreds of thousands. These Negroes keep calling me out my name. T.D. Jakes, all, uh, Creflo, all of them. They mad. They made many grievous complaints. Read. Which they could not prove. Which what? Which they could not prove. Which they could not prove. Why? Because we use the Bible. They want to say we in a cult. They want to say we murdered people. Right. They say all this stuff. Ain't nobody got no proof. None. They say, oh, yeah, y'all in a 5-1-C-3, so y'all can't say nothing against the white man. Huh? <laughs> What class are you watching? Yeah. What class? Last I checked, they cut our classes when we get when we get right. too deep. Right. So if we in cahoots with the government, why do they cut our classes off in the middle of the class? Can you explain that, please, Mr. White Man? Last I checked, we go through the Bible and history books showing that this man is Esau. Right. So what? I don't I don't get y'all logic, y'all y'all black Hebrew Israelites. I do not understand y'all logic. Y'all make no sense. What Bible are you reading? What classes y'all watch? They, maybe they're watching GMS. I don't know. Go ahead. Read it again, though. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and laid many grievous complaints against Paul, uh -huh. which they could not prove, while he answered for himself, mm -hmm. neither against the law of the Jews. So when he answered, he didn't speak against the law of the Jews. Neither against the temple. Neither against the temple. Nor yet against Caesar. Nor against Caesar. Who's Caesar, y'all? You're right. He didn't speak against the government either. Mm -hmm. He spoke such plain and innocently. He didn't make anybody uh, wrong. Read. Have I offended anything at all? He didn't offend anybody in his speech. His words were very, very uh, chosen. Hey, Cap, you got to jump over and read 24, 16. Yeah. And then go to the next verse. Go ahead. Acts 24, verse 16. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. That's why they couldn't prove nothing against him. Right. They That's couldn't cold. prove nothing against him. That's cold. And that's the spirit we pray that all of us can get to. Well, we have words. Remember, go to Luke 21 and 15. Well, we are able to speak in such a manner, biblically, with world knowledge and all that, put it all together, that you don't speak in offense to God or to man, that you're able to navigate with your words so smooth. They're like, God, don't. Oh. Well, that is true. It does say I'm the devil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did take you into captivity. Yeah. I mean, but he said it so nice. Right. I guess so. Go ahead, read that. Book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 15. Uh-huh. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, uh -huh. which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. So mm -hmm. that's what God said he's going to give us. And Acts 25 and 26 is a prime example of that. Paul was full of the Spirit. Acts 7 with Stephen, he was full of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. There's many examples in the Bible where the prophets are full of the Spirit, and guess what? They won't be able to gainsay nor resist the words that are coming out because it's going to be the truth. Because it's you believe in the Bible? Yeah, I believe in the Bible. You sure you believe in the Bible? Yes, I believe in the Bible. Okay. Well, it says right here, thus and thus. It says right here, thus and thus. And you're able to speak it eloquently to where they accept it. And it's not offensive to them in that situation. Because we know 
Uh, Amos 5 and 10, it says, uh, we're going to be hated. We're going to offend some people. That's why Christ said, blessed is he that is what? That is not offended in me. So, we had a lot more, y'all, but it's 9 o'clock. I'm on time. You know, I'm going to be on time. So, <laughs> y'all get on time, and then we get the whole class done. What? But all prayer. I know people got captivity, so on and so forth. So, we'll finish it up next week. Lord's will, life last. Oh, Shalom, most high in Christ. Bless all praise. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 